Hi, my name is Akal, and ordered by our cell. You have to have the money, the base, I am your new hands. One of the words they don't translate correctly. They always like to lie. This is the Grateful Dead we're listening to. They were live in Irvine. I can't remember what year it was, but I went there to see them. There's the word karagma. No one buys or sells without the money of the beast on your mind or in your hand. You can see that the correct in context definition or translation of the word karagma means the impress on the coin or stamp money coin. And I got the Wikipedia article to finally come clear on that. I haven't checked it in a while, but I'll go back and check the word mark of the beast or the number of the beast on Wikipedia. Well, so anyway, let's think what happened that's significant. The stock market dropped like 550 points this week. It's June 21st, the solstice, the longest day, and the, pretty soon we're going to have like a full moon that's going to be real close. So I hope you're having a good summer wherever you are. And uh, next week, or next time I'm on, which will be um, the second Friday I'll be on now, we've had a new lottery for the cable cash shows down here, so I'm going to get a live 50-minute show with call-ins, too, so you can ask me just about anything, and I'll probably tell you the truth about it. If I don't know, I'll let you know. But anyway, that will be the second Friday, so it'll start in July. So, and it'll be 50 minutes, and I'll tell you more on Facebook, and you can find Facebook on my website, which is 666ismoney.com. And, uh, well, they had a lot, a lot of people in Brazil were rioting. You know, the bus fares went up like 20 cents down there, plus, I guess, a lot of other things, or they went up more than 20 cents. I can't remember. I, I should have cut the article out, but anyway, so there's a lot of demonstrators. It kind of makes me wonder what what it would take, you know, like the the uh, uh, Occupy um, Wall Street didn't really get that many people. You know, it's kind of, Manhattan is kind of a hard place to, you know, have a gathering. Like, if we could get a lot of people to go to Washington, you know, you could camp out on the mall there. But, uh, you know, you're kind of out in the open and... Uh, I don't know, you know, in the winter you could stand up tents and stuff on the, like the, what did they call that, the uh, bonus, bonus army, people that after they fought a war didn't get their bonuses or something, and so they all camped out in Washington, some kind of history there, they, they didn't get their money, and uh, that's what happens a lot of times, this, the history like of the United States re uh, Revolution had a lot to do with money. In fact, I think the guy, John Knox, wrote a book. He was the comptroller of the currency. And let's see, I've got this on the gospel of eliminating money here. Well, I'll show it to you and I'll flip through it looking for it here. You can go to my website and find this bunch of quotations from famous people who believed in eliminating money. And... Um, we have St. Thomas More and Edward Bellamy, Madison, the debates. Oh gosh, what am I looking for? I'm looking for, uh, I don't even remember anymore. The name of this song is like Space, Drums in Space, and it's the Grateful Dead. Oh yeah, here it is, John Knox. I was talking about the uh, United States history, and this guy... Uh, John Knox, who was the comptroller of the U.S. currency, wrote this book where they're talking about um, this money causing, as one of the causes of the revolution. Yeah, there it is. Let's see what he even named it. Paper money, a cause of the revolution. So, uh, yeah, Nikolai Tolstoy believed in eliminating money. And uh, Bertland Russell... You can find all these quotes on uh, my website as told by the prophets, the gospel of eliminating money. You know, uh, that guy Muammar Gaddafi, the populist leader of Libya, believed in eliminating money. And um, 
Castro, Fidel Castro in Cuba, which is probably one of the reasons why they, you know, didn't allow Americans to go there for so long. And um, it's I'm just it's kind of strange. Well, that's one of the reasons they killed Kennedy was because of this failed Bay of Pigs revolution they were supposed to have down in Cuba. And Kennedy didn't back these soldiers up with armies and stuff. And um, Kennedy did a lot of things uh, to get killed. Um, you know, I, his brother as Attorney General. And I haven't really. I've I studied this when it was happening. His brother, like as Attorney General, was um, active against these conglomerates and uh, mergers and acquisitions. They called them, and you know, they had a big thing back in the 1900s. This um, trust. Um, what the heck did they call it? They were, you know, with monopolies and everything, and they investigated it, and I don't know if they called it the Taft Commission or something. But, um, yeah, money is, like, the cause of all the problems in the world, and a lot of these famous people have believed in it, like, you know, St. Thomas More in Utopia. They didn't use money in Utopia. And then Edward Bellamy wrote this book called Looking Backwards, which was very popular in the late 1800s and his um, book started like a populist uh, revolution and they had a whole bunch of votes but you know not enough to change things it's like um, you know like we need to evolve and the way to do that would be to eliminate money it's like you know, if you ask yourself what it would be like in the kingdom of God or, you know, it's like if everybody was godly, then, you know, money wouldn't be necessary. And money is a stumbling block, like it says in Ezekiel, it's in the gospel of eliminating money, that, uh, you know, money is a stumbling block and um, it's uh, an unclean thing and people are going to cast it in the streets. Uh, that's in Ezekiel 7. And of course, Jesus said, you can't serve God or money. You'll either love the one or hate the other or hold to the one and despise the other. Uh, but the Pharisees who loved money heard all this and scoffed. So, you know, Jesus told his disciples to go forth without money in their hands. And uh, so did the Buddha, the Buddha, and um, St. Francis of Assisi. So throughout history, we've had people that... Um, believed in eliminating money. In Plato's Republic, the guardians were not allowed to touch gold and silver. And um, so, like, uh, you know, you think of all the people that are involved with money that aren't really producing anything. You've got the bankers, bookkeepers, accountants, salesmen, sales clerks, and all these people that are um, not producing anything. And then, this was in the paper Thursday, just yesterday, like in the Philippines, they have these people living like in little shacks along the uh, dike or whatever it is, you know. It's like jetty or something. They're living it there. For, they have to like, you know, what if a hurricane or something comes? And then they've got these people like sleeping in the streets in uh, the Philippines. And it says in this article about 10% live in extreme poverty, unable to meet their most basic food needs. So it's one of my big things, you know, is this population growth. And, you know, there's just so many people in the world, and there's just there's going to be more. There's the United States, and the way it would be if we didn't allow so many immigrants to come in. I made that chart, and... But the world population, it's like geometrically progressed. And, you know, like when my dad was born, you know, there were only two billion people in the world. He was born before that. But um, it is 2039, there's going to be 2032, there's going to be like nine billion. And so there's the way it's looked throughout history. It's been, took all that time to get one billion people. And then it just like geometrically just shot up like that. And so like, you know, if we don't change the way we're living, then, you know, with global warming, it's like becoming, the weather is just like so crazy. We've got fires out here 
in Arizona and Colorado and the, the bark beetles. We've got these beetles that infest our pine trees around here and they they eat the tree up and kill it and so it's like tinder for fire so uh, it's really you know um, with these big hurricanes and and um, all this other stuff we're having tornadoes in the Midwest it, you know it's kind of like the biblical Ar Ar Armageddon but you know it doesn't have to fall apart it's like you know I was saying at the very beginning Wall Street fell like 500 points and it's been at record highs but it's just total ir irrational the whole market system this funny money paper money stuff it's like one of these quotes here I have from Goethe and Faust Mephistopheles creates uh, paper money and gives it to the emperor and uh, the emperor's really happy with it so uh, and then another thing a lot of people don't realize is uh, that that um, William Shakespeare you know that part where it says uh, that um, you know let's kill the lawyers first if you look at the whole context of it it's like the the king is talking about eliminating money but first we have to uh, kill all the lawyers here it is it's uh, Jack Cade and Henry the Sixth is where it is. And uh, let's see, there shall be no money when I am king. But the first thing we do, let's kill all the lawyers. So, uh, and then Shakespeare has a thing about gold in uh, the Timon of Athens uh, about all the things that gold can do. It's a pretty long poem. You know, Karl Marx believed in eliminating money. But, you know, you don't hear very many of these so-called communists talking about eliminating money. It's the um, the only way to really get this done. I mean, they're having this, this Zeitgeist movement is pretty good. And they they tell you in there, the, you know, about, the, you know, this Jesus myth, you know, and and how it's similar to a lot of other religions. You know, I don't know if Jesus really existed or not but you know it's obvious that he didn't walk on water you know I mean that's like physically impossible but Jesus was a, a really good teacher and he had a lot of wisdom you know it's like the Hare Krishnas give you this huge book the Bhagavad Gita to read and but the four gospels are you know there's a, like I said Jesus told his disciples to go forth without money the first thing that he did when he entered Jerusalem was upset the tables of the money changers. And today the money changers are on Wall Street and they worship money five days a week in those huge temple towers, you know, the World Trade Center and um, in the center of Babylon. And uh, Babylon's the city of commerce and confusion. And this whole 9-11 thing is a big fraud. It's like... Um, you know, I never believed, how could these buildings just come straight down like that? Uh, you know, that if fires could cause buildings to fall straight down like that, who would want to work in one, you know? It's like, um, if, how could, it just like, I couldn't believe it. It's like, and then not only that, but like, there was a third building that fell that day, which is World Trade Center building number seven. Here it is. And a lot of people don't realize this this happened, you know? It's like, People are so busy trying to make money that they have they can't be aware of these these things like this. This World Trade Center Building Seven. If you Google that, and and I got this card from architects and engineers for 9/11 Truth, and uh, they've got a website and they they list a bunch of things that uh, you know make it. They 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 this. Like high rise, like I'm saying, like they had an inferno, like in a hotel in Madrid that didn't collapse. Uh, a lot of people say, well, they had concrete around the girders or something, but there's been other buildings and things like this. You know, there's a lot, it's like this whole 9 11 thing, it's like the Kennedy assassination, and um, that was a coup d'etat, and the CIA killed him. They have these pictures of these they looked like tramps and they jumped on a freight car after the assassination and 
they were the freight car was started to leave the rail yard, but one of the switchmen named Lee Bowers saw these guys get into a gondola car, and um, he stopped the train in the sheriff's office, went into the car, and these so-called bums were like cursing at the uh, sheriffs. The sheriff wrote in his report, you know, he said, I jacked a shell into my shotgun and, and told these guys to get off the train. And the, they took pictures of these tramps that walked by uh, some news reporters. And um, I've written a story about this. I, like in 1985, I wrote this story, Who Killed JFK? My friend Ed Finkelstein, in fact, he used to have a show here. Well, this was in 1987, and they've, they've got, I've, I knew about this thing for quite a while. These are pictures of one of the tramps, and it looks just like this guy, Frank Sturgis, who was a Watergate burglar. And then one of the other tramps was this guy here, who looks, you know, like a dead ringer for E. Howard Hunt. And both these guys knew each other, E. Howard Hunt and Frank Sturgis, because uh, they were also like anti-Castro uh, people, you know, for the CIA. And then this guy, Jack Ruby, you see, I think, you know, they were trying to kill Oswald first, that guy, um, Tippett, Officer Tippett. Uh, they caught Oswald in a movie theater, but uh, Oswald killed Officer Tippett. And then in order to shut him up, because Oswald said that he was just a patsy, and uh, so this guy, Jack Rubenstein, who was a Chicago gangster, and he was good friends of the police. And the whole thing down there is really shady, like the chief of police was uh, somebody, you know, that was involved in the CIA or something. I can't remember, but there's just so much, like, intricacy to this. And uh, Lyndon Johnson, um, you know, he... Um, could have had a lot of people say he was involved in it, and I think he probably was. And uh, you know, they escalated the Vietnam War after that. And uh, well, they started off with advisors. You know, like now we've got advisors in Syria. You know, that could be a, another Vietnam man. You know, if they go in there, I, I think it's so rotten. You know, like the United States got rid of Muammar Gaddafi, who I told you earlier believed in eliminating money. He wrote these green books. He called it was his, his philosophy. You know, Gaddafi was a really good man, and uh, I've always wanted to go to Libya. And uh, you know, they have before and after pictures of you know the way it was and the way it is now. And it's same with Iraq. You know, we go in there to liberate us from Saddam. You know, I mean, Saddam did not have weapons of mass destruction. It was a big lie, I guess, involved in this war. It's same like with Pearl Harbor. The Henry Stimson was the Secretary of War, and he wrote in his diary that we have to maneuver Japan into firing the first shot, and that's what got us involved in World War II. We put an embargo on Japan and forced them to fire the first shot, but we took all our aircraft carriers out of Pearl Harbor and left a bunch of junk there. And same with like um, this 9/11 thing, you know, it, they had to have another. Pearl Harbor in order to get us involved in these Middle East wars and they I mean you know they, they say this guy um, uh, uh, Bin Laden uh, orchestrated all this and these people that supposedly flew the airplanes didn't even know how to fly a Cessna and uh, so we've got these big conspiracies you know they had to get rid of Hitler because Hitler didn't have any gold and you know they were doing great with barter Hitler would trade finished goods for raw materials and um, they had the IG Farben plant which was near Auschwitz that produced uh, gasoline from coal it was a coal gasification plant there at Auschwitz it was like a industrial uh, refinery you know so they probably had a lot of chimneys that were flaring, you know, or, or maybe they wouldn't waste the gas like that, but uh, um, that was a big factory there, and it probably didn't smell too good. 
So a lot of people in the neighborhood thought that those that was like you know they were burning bodies constantly, but like crematoria don't shoot smoke and flames out the, the top, and uh, it's not practical to kill all these people with louse disinfectant. They allegedly used this Zyklon B, which is a louse disinfectant, and a lot of people during World War One died from uh, typhus. So they were afraid of an epidemic. I think two million people in uh, the Soviet Union died from typhus during World War I. And so they were very concerned about... In fact, uh, Annie Frank died of typhus in Belsen. So when they came into these concentration camps, they had to take their clothes off and uh, have showers. And Dr. Mengele would stand on the railroad platform looking to see if these people were sick. You know, you can tell if somebody has typhus by the way they act and look, you know. And so he would send them to become deloused. And uh, so, like, sometimes during the epidemics at Auschwitz, they had, like, up to 300 people die. And they had to build these crematoria to, to sanitarily dispose of the dead. It's like... Uh, not a practical thing to use this louse disinfectant because, like, it it dissipates, you know. They have it in these granules that are, it's absorbed in there and it uh, slowly dissipates and you can't just sweep it out the door. Somebody testified at the uh, Nuremberg trials that uh, that they were green little pellets and they weren't green and they didn't just sweep them out the window like she said they did. So they made up this story. It was communist propaganda because they didn't like Hitler. You know, Hitler wanted originally to send the Jews to Madagascar. You know, Madagascar, I'd rather go there than to Israel. This whole Middle East thing is all over oil, and we're running out of oil, and, you know, this fracking, I don't think it's going to sustain us. I just really think that, you know, these are the end times, and we've been lied to, you know. Satan, if you or the devil, look up the word the word devil and the etymology. It's a slanderer, you know, somebody who falsely accuses. So you know, our government is is the devil. You know, um, they they've been lying to us. They haven't come clean and told us the truth. And the truth is that you know what the way we're living isn't sustainable. And they all these plutocrats and rich people know it. And like uh, John Travolta has a 747 that he can fly and bring all his friends and a lot of these tycoons in, you know, the Middle East, they have, and a lot of the Russian oligarchs have these huge yachts and stuff that they can leave and they have jets so they can all go to a place like Australia or, um, or Madagascar maybe even, you know, and, um, Weighted out, you know, it's like um, America is the biggest consumer of oil, and and China is. I just read their, you know, it's like they're insane over there, and they've got so many people, and uh, so like, uh, you know, if we're going to avoid a catastrophe, we've got to get a bunch of smart people to get together and talk about eliminating money, you know, and stop eating meat so that there would be plenty of grain for all the people in the world to eat. You know, I, I lived for a whole year on nothing but corn and soybeans with a pinch of salt and I ate some vitamin C. So anyway, I'll have a 50-minute show next time and it'll be live call-in and uh, I'll put the phone numbers up on uh, Facebook and tell you when to call in. And... Um, you can ask me anything you want, but uh, it's really pretty simple. You know, the truth is that um, money is unnecessary and it makes everybody a slave. And there's so many people that are not really producing anything, especially these people on Wall Street. And uh, anyway, my name is Raquel. In order to buy or sell, you have to have the money of the beast on your mind, on your hand. And God bless you. Peace and love. Bye.